Why was General George Patton refueling his tanks at Texas gas stations in 1941? Find out in this edition of The Paper Trail. When General George Marshall became U.S. Army Chief of Staff on September 1, 1939, Germany was invading Poland. Great Britain and France declared war on Germany. The United States Army had less than 190,000 soldiers, including Philippine scouts and army nurses. The 200,000-member National Guard was in worse shape. Equipment was old, scarce, or completely unavailable. Guardsmen were wearing tattered World War I-era uniforms and sleeping in World War I tents, and their blankets were moth-eaten and decayed. Marshall had learned in World War I that military doctrine was outdated, that senior officers didn't have experience commanding large forces, and that coordination amongst Army units was all on paper. It took 18 months for the United States to send any coherent units to France after war was declared in Washington, D.C. He remembered, quote, the unfortunate results of Corps command by individuals who had never commanded divisions in actual operations, close quote, and the unnecessary loss of lives at the beginning of the Meuse-Argonne battle. This was not going to happen on his watch. After President Roosevelt declared a limited national emergency, Marshall knew that the few regular army units could not absorb a large number of personnel and that the National Guard troops would need to be federalized to spread out the new recruits. Then he planned to train them in maneuvers larger than the United States had ever seen. He had to convince Congress to fund this endeavor that he admitted would be expensive. In his notes on maneuvers from February 1940, Marshall wrote, The expense of maintaining our army is heavy, but to maintain the troops without properly training them would be inexcusably wasteful, as well as highly dangerous in the present world situation. The army has never been permitted to train in time of peace, except on a basis so limited that the officers have been largely without practical knowledge of the management and leadership of brigades, divisions, and army corps. This year, a great emergency and the wise direction of the president has given the army, for the first time in peace, an opportunity to learn how to fight as a team. Morale is high. We are actually building a field army. Marshall selected Lieutenant General Leslie McNair, the Chief of Staff for the General Headquarters and later leader of the Army Ground Forces during the war, as training officer for the maneuvers. McNair's greatest concern embarking on this exercise was Corps Command. Previously, Corps Commanders had been trained only theoretically, and practical operations would be very different. Marshall asked McNair to literally grade the Division Commanders as a process of wisely choosing Corps Commanders. In testifying to Congress to justify the expense of a large-scale maneuver, Marshall is reported to have said, quote, My God, Senator, that's the reason I do it. I want the mistakes down in Louisiana, not over in Europe, close quote. The area chosen for this first large-scale maneuver, set for September 1941, was northwestern Louisiana, bounded by the Sabine River and Texas border to the west, to just east of the Calcasieu and Red Rivers on the east, and Shreveport to the north, some 3,400 square miles. More than 400,000 soldiers, both regular Army and National Guard, would participate, forming a Red Army and a Blue Army, and totaling 19 divisions. This would be the largest maneuver ever conducted in the United States. First, the Red Army attacked south on the Blue Army for four days. Crossing the Red River proved problematic. Lieutenant General Ben Lear had to send his armored forces north to cross at Shreveport and Cachada, losing valuable time. This first phase ended with units bogged down fighting, not making much headway. Second, the Blue Army, now with Major General George Patton's armored troops, spent four days attacking the Red Army to the north at Shreveport. The training was proceeding much as the first phase had, but then Patton decided to attack the Red Army from the north, so he took his tanks across the Sabine River into Texas, buying gas at stations along the way. This effort allowed the armor to capture the Red Army staff at Barksdale Field near Shreveport. The Louisiana maneuvers tested Army doctrine, organization, and equipment. They also answered McNair's worry about Corps commanders as he submitted this report card of all division commanders and a few who didn't command to Marshall. The Louisiana maneuvers also showed that given a chance, the United States Army could and would pull the unpredictable and that opposing armies should never allow their attention diverted from the Americans.